Hello violin players, welcome to lesson 11 in the Awful Strings Violin for Beginners course. I'm Henriette and in this lesson we're going to learn the third finger on the D string and also the fourth finger which goes beyond the book and we are going to be using page 21 in our book as well and I think that by the end of this lesson you'll have a good grasp of the technique of using the third finger and the fourth finger and you will be able to play all the pieces on page 21 too. So let's go ahead and let's get started. I have already written a finger line on my finger because we're going to use that again today and we're going to start by putting our violin up on our shoulder making sure that that corner of your jaw is on the chin rest and then I'm going to move my hand back so that my finger line makes a nice little V shape with my E string and now I'm going to check my thumb and my thumb just lies there very loosely just peeking over the edge by about half a nail and as you know we're pushing our wrist out so that our fingers will point towards the string. Once you've got all that let's play D, 1, 2 and then hold it. We're playing with long bows, here we go, D, one finger on D, two fingers, and now before we place our third finger we need to know that the third finger comes right by the side of the second finger so unlike the first and second fingers there is no gap between fingers two and three so let's place your third finger right by the side awesome there it is now have a look at my fingers you can see fingers one and two have a gap fingers two and three are close together in a moment we're going to be using finger number four which is your pinky and that one has a gap again so let's take all our fingers away and we'll do that again checking your finger line your thumb and your wrist and we're playing with long bows here comes our D one two fingers nice gap finger three is together now let's give it a go and let's play that fourth finger with a space soften up your thumb as you do that that's amazing now the fourth finger doesn't yet appear in your book but I think you might as well start to practice this fourth finger because your pinky has got the smallest muscles so if we're going to leave developing your pinky till a bit later it is even further behind than it might otherwise be simply because it is so small so good job well done for trying now let's think about the letter names of these notes we know that no fingers on D is called D one finger on D is called E two fingers on D is called F sharp. Now we can see a pattern emerging. Notes go like the alphabet D, E, F sharp. So the third finger will be called G. And then something special happens because I say notes go like the alphabet, but they go up to the alphabet up to G. And after G, the next note up is an A again. We're starting at the beginning of the alphabet. So if I'm thinking about my fingers again, it will be D, E, F sharp, G, and the fourth finger will be an A. Some of you will now say, why not play the open A string then? Yes, you can do that, and that is what is suggested in your book. So if ever you have difficulty playing the fourth finger, I would first of all encourage you to practice your pinky, and you'll find it easier, but you can always check your pinky with the open A string. Now let's have a look in your book now. And I would like you to have a look at this grid here. So what we've just played is D, 1 on D, 2 on D, 3 on D, and then you can see this little V-shaped thing. And that means fingers close together. That just indicates where there is a half step between your fingers, a half step between your notes, F sharp, 
to G is only a semitone, a half step, and your fingers therefore are together. Now we've already added this, which is A with a fourth finger on D. So you have two different ways of playing the A. You can play the open A string, and you can play the A with a fourth finger, with your pinky, on the D string. Now, let's have a go now at playing exercise 47. Now we've already seen what that means, leave fingers down, and we're just going to continue that technique in this exercise as well. So we're going to play two Ds, then two times the first finger, and then we're going to add the second finger to what we've already got lying down on the string. Two, two, three, 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 two, two, one, one, D, D, and these are all short bows. And then we go D, one, two, three, three, two, one, D. And these notes are half notes. In England, we call them minims and they are played with a whole bow and they last twice as long. So let's grab our violins and let's play this. So as ever, before I start to play, I'm checking everything very carefully. So I'm checking my finger line. I'm checking my thumb. Is my thumb still here? I'm hoping you're not leaning your thumb back like this. If so, just hoist it up, push your wrist that way. Now let's place our bow on the D string and I'll count us in for four and we're playing up to your marker in the middle of the bow. So we're playing at the lower half of the bow. One, two, three, four. on fingers one and two that I think playing the third finger is relatively easier. So you've done all the hard work in the previous lessons and today I think it's just a little bit easier than previously. So well done. Let's now play Climbing Up which is number 49 in your book and in this piece we're going to challenge the bow a little bit. So let's see if we can get into this straight away. Are you ready? Checking over all your left hand positions, singing along in your head, remember? One, two, three, four. sport to just try and sing this song without playing it. 
So if you've never tried that before, let today be your first day. Because we don't sing so much in school anymore nowadays, do we? So singing doesn't come second nature and it is so useful in violin playing or indeed playing on any instrument to be able to sing songs in your head. So we're keeping up that practice all the time. If you are as uninhibited as I am, singing on camera, I'm sure you can sing in the comfort of your own house. So give it a go today. Let's have a look at exercise 50 now. And here we're going to use that fourth finger. And I'll show you, I have written the fourth fingers in my book. So it encourages me to use more of the pinky, you see. So when you look here, it is D, one, two, three. Then on the starting note of the second bar, please write a four. I've just penciled it in here so I can't forget it. Four, three, two, one, and so I go on. Bar three goes the same way as bar one. D, one, two, three, and here's my four. Take your time and stop the video if you want to write that in. I think it's quite essential that you do write it in. Now, as we progress and we hit the two long A's here, then you can play open A strings. And that's quite nice because we can test the tuning of our fourth fingers right there because we've got two long A's here. The next note, I'm going to be using a fourth finger. And that is our checkpoint here to see whether that fourth finger does indeed sound the same as the open A string that we've just played. So here's for your challenge today. As always, before we play any song, check your violin position. Check again that it's not too high, that it's not too low, that it's just above the horizontal. Can you check that it is about in the middle between straight in front and straight to the side? So at a 45 degree angle. And can you check as well that you're tilting to the right slightly? Just have that little angle. So we want to keep checking this violin position so that you improve it over time as well. So we keep coming back to it briefly time and time again. So I'm checking my finger line. I'm checking my thumb. I'm checking my wrist and I'm stepping a small step forwards with my left foot. Can you remember we talked about that earlier? Are you ready to play exercise 50? We're taking it slow and we're playing half bows initially. One, two, three, four. And a space for your pinky. And that is a common issue. Many people say that. And there's a very simple trick to bring your fourth finger closer to the strings. And the trick is to bring your left elbow under the violin a bit more. You can see what happens to my fingertip if I do that. Can you see it comes closer to the string? So that will help you. If you're playing like this, bring your elbow under the violin like that. So that it's really, you can, I can almost see it on this end here. So I can see it around the right hand side, past the right hand side of my violin, you see. 
That feels like a bit of a stretch initially, but this will become easier as you practice that more often. Let's play the whole song again, shall we? So, check over your violin position. Check over your finger line. Check your thumb. Push your wrist out and bring your elbow under. One, two, three, four. you were stretching in front there. That is superb practice and that is superb progress. Well done you. I'm really really pleased with that. Of course that is a bit of a challenge today but when you practice it slowly for the next two to three days you know that each video comes out after a couple of days so that gives you time to really go over the exercises that we're doing and then you'll find it gradually becoming easier. So I have no worries about you playing Ode to Joy because most people will know this song so I'll let you practice that on your own. By all means have a go at filling in the notes and the names at exercise 52 and in our next lesson I'll give you the answers. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in lesson 12. Goodbye.